you're watching Half New X, and this is a very rare video from my channel because it is a film review instead of a drama review. Wandering Earth 2. Four years ago, when the first film got released, I also made a review on my channel. One small side note before we talk about this film is this film is based on a short story written by the author Liu Cixin, who is also the author of the well-known Hugo Award-winning sci-fi fiction Three Body. And Three Body happens to be having two adaptations going on right now in China. One is the animation version done by Billy Billy, which I would not recommend anybody checking it out. Then the other one is the live-action television theory version focused on the first book done by Tencent. So as a novel writer, this is like the best luck you can ever have. All those things aside, let me now get into specifically Wandering Earth 2 as a movie. I will break down this review into two parts. One is just focusing on it as a movie. Then I will talk more specifically about all the information I've gathered about this movie, as it is another milestone for the Chinese film industry. And before I go into talk about these two parts, let me quickly remind you about this IP. This is Wandering Earth 2, a sequel movie to Wandering Earth 1 that happened back in 2019. The sequel movie happens chronologically before the first movie. Therefore, you don't actually have to know anything about the first movie to watch this one. Second, I want to briefly introduce you to the setup and premise of the story, which is based on the idea that during the process of the death of a star, it's going to go through many phases. One of them is called Helium Flash, where the star will expand, swallow the planets close to it. Technically, our sun is not going to have that until many billions of years later. But in this story, the scientists find out this is going to happen much more prematurely. In this story, people eventually find out the only way that they can survive is to actually push the entire planet off its orbit and help it find a new home in Alpha Centauri. The first movie that happened four years ago happened while Earth is already on its way and it's been captured by Jupiter's gravity. So the biggest crisis in the first movie is how Earth can escape that. And this movie, the second movie, is the prequel to that. And it will end with Earth finally started moving off its orbit. First, as a sci-fi movie, is it worth watching? Yes. It is a very exciting movie. And in many ways, it is a very fitting people's expectation mainstream entertainment sci-fi movie with pretty much every element you are familiar with, a well-made sci-fi movie would contain. Something that will definitely help you consume your whole bucket of popcorn, probably only a third into the whole thing, as it is a 173 minute movie. Definitely empty your bladder before you sit down. The next thing about it is if you've watched the first Wandering Earth and you're wondering how you're gonna compare the second Wandering Earth to it, there's a significant jump of quality in pretty much every department from script writing level to the visual and CGI. If the first movie was regarded as a eighth grader's work, then the second movie can be seen as a university graduate's work. For this very long film, you can look at it in a couple of different ways. First, if in chapters, it will be made up with three major chapters. In each chapter, there's a big crisis that needs to be solved. Then if you look at the film as a whole, then you can see kind of three major lines. On the very surface, it is a sci-fi movie that will include updated version of very well-known aircraft that exist now in the world. It just has gotten new functions. It will have a lot of battles happening between drones and planes and missiles flying across the screen. It will have the visualized and probably the closest to possible to get achieved space elevator. It will also have a lunar landing. It will have nuclear weapons exploding in ways that you probably have never imagined. It will have earth engines that will push Earth off its orbit. That's the first line on the top of being a sci-fi movie and what you expect and what you're gonna be able to enjoy. The second line would be the discussion about artificial intelligence, about cyborg ideas, about identities of being humans. If everything in your brain can be translated into digital signals, your consciousness can have a digital copy and get uploaded to a system, then is that you? Can you have eternal life in digital space? That moral question is also a threat throughout this movie. Actually goes into the first movie too, and if they make the third one, probably this will be very much more deeply explored. Then 
underneath that, you have the human spirit. All the human elements in this causes troubles, but also saves the day. So this is my general look on this movie in terms of what it is, and then what kind of entertainment you should be expecting going to cinema, watching it. And also the practical advice of P before entering. Now, the second part of this review, it's gonna be focused more on the background information I can dig out of this production. If the first film of Wandering Earth is the starting point, of a new era of Chinese sci-fi movie or the industrialized process of making such a time-consuming genre of movies, then the second movie is a huge leap from that, touching the ceiling of right now what is possible on earth of anywhere's film industry. I'm not saying it's the greatest movie out there, the script can be heavily improved, but Overall, it has shown that it is possible for a country outside America and a film industry outside of Hollywood to do something that can get to this level. This movie is directed by Guo Fan. When he made the first movie, he really wasn't planning for any future movies. So when they got the huge success, the question is, well, our male lead character is dead in the first movie and pretty dead. You can't bring him back from that. The second movie therefore ended up being the prequel where they're gonna tell you more about this character character's past leading up to the first movie, but making a second movie really wasn't decided until a year after the first movie screened and got big success. Luckily, because the first movie was so successful, it got much more investment. When this director and his crew decided we're gonna go and do the second movie, they very soon realized, shit, we know so little about hard science physics. How this and that work? How do you calculate this and that? Can this idea actually be realized? They know nothing. So they went out looking for help from <laughs> the best scientists in China. During the making of the movie, they had a 24-hour connected hotline to groups of scientists who are specialized in computer science, artificial intelligence, or astrophysics. So some of the ideas you see in this film are based on real science, but some of them are dramatized. Heist. This is a spoiler. I kind of have to talk about it. If you're worried about it, skip to this time code. During this movie, there's a key plot of nuke the moon. And they were like, could it happen? They asked the scientists and scientists actually did a calculation for them and saying with all our human known number of nuclear warheads, we're gonna need a billion times capacity to actually nuke the moon. So they figured out a new way of nuking the moon that would significantly increase warhead's impact, but probably still not being able to fully get it done. And it's the closest version we can think of as you watch the movie or see. Other things such as computer science and artificial intelligence also gets discussed a lot in this movie. They did find real coders <laughs> to write codes for this movie. Every time you see a computer screen where code is running, it's real code. If you freeze the frame and take it down, you can actually uh, have it running. So they put a lot of effort into making the science as close as it can be to reality. And then in terms of being a sci-fi movie, this movie also improved greatly from the first one in terms of how many great renderings and shots and new technologies they used. It ended up with over 3000 shots of special effects. A third of that, surprisingly, are actually not on spacecraft, on moons, on like nuclear warheads, any of that, but on human faces because they age back the main leads 20 years and they did actually extensive modeling. Skin level, muscle level, vein level, bone structure. To me though, the most interesting thing I've heard during all the interviews I've watched that the director mentioned is it is not the technical, the computer that consists of the biggest obstacles of making such a big scale movie for him. The true distance between Chinese film industry and Hollywood's best system is the industrialized process of management down to we have that many shots we need to do. How do we name it in a system where it is possible for everyone who connects into the system and work immediately find what they need? Or such as having two thumb people on site of that shooting day and how do you deliver food to everyone at the same time so they eat hot food and not have to wait two hours to queue up. So it became actually a management game in China. Such worked out system and people who are experienced in making up such a huge team and make it work is near to zero. We don't have that knowledge at all. We don't know the process of how that gets done. And that's actually the really expensive and worth guarding secret. 
During doing this, therefore, he decided to hire a group of interns on site every day, just staring at everybody else, see what are the mistakes that have been made on set that day, record it, and then they will sit down and revise. And he started to create his own system. This director is very interesting in terms of he didn't just want to make a movie that make money, and he has this very selfless idea about once he got that figure out, all his experience during making this huge blockbuster movie, he's gonna share it with other filmmakers in China so that Chinese film industry overall can do better. For that, I can only say this to the director, he is a guy with great vision. In case you don't know, he's actually not a professional filmmaker. When he was in university, he was in law school, close to his 30s, he just decided, no, it's not my thing, I still like movie making. He went to film school, but he was too old to really do a BA. Therefore, he did a course that is to do with film management and then went into making movies. And the only really went into cinema, got a cinema release movie was that movie, can you believe? He said he had always wanted to do a huge sci-fi movie, but it wasn't possible. Before Wandering Earth, China had no sci-fi movie at all. Somehow, after that one crappy romantic film that has nothing to do with sci-fi, the next major project he got was Wandering Earth. He almost single-footedly kicked open the door of Chinese sci-fi movies and showed the world, but also showed other people within China who doubt about whether China can ever produce a sci-fi movie. Anything is possible if you want it enough. You work hard on it, you never give up, and then miracles happen. And so at the end of the day, is Wandering Earth the perfect movie? No, it has a lot to improve on still, mostly actually not on the hard technical aspects, but actually on story writing, how you pace it, where you make it fast, where you make it slow. Right now the pacing needs a little bit more work to have a better overall experience when you watch the story. This film can be broken down into two movies, and it's more like a Wandering Earth 2.5, because it's really one and a half movie almost, in terms of both the story content and the length of it. But I had a feeling that the director, because he wasn't sure whether they can make the third movie, so they crammed as much stuff as they possibly can into this one movie. On one hand, you get really the bang for the buck, three for the price of two situation happening <laughs> with this movie. On the other hand, if you only look at movie as storytelling, because the overpacked and jammed content, it actually makes the rhythm and pacing a bit weird, and maybe the overall experience of it actually got compromised. But those are, in my opinion, minor imperfections as compared to the huge achievement that this film has managed to achieve. It really now is the true, true milestone in industrialized filmmaking process for Chinese cinema. And the last thing is, it does offer a new perspective on such a very old concept of a huge crisis descends upon humanity and how we face it. Previously, we just only see Hollywood providing that perspective as it is really the only industrialized and rich enough filmmaking industry to be able to constantly chuck out this type of movies and ideas. Now you have China coming in, Wandering Earth as the first IP to be able to offer a different perspective, a new type of heroism that is deeply rooted in Chinese traditional culture. An agriculture-based culture's development in human history, how they look at, for example, instead of running away from Earth, let's just take Earth with us. Such as the whole world's everyone try their best coming together in solidarity facing the crisis Although instrumental individuals are needed for such things, it is a joint effort of countless name and nameless people. Every person needs to put the best foot forward to get the whole thing done. You can't just have one person eventually save the day. That's impossible for the scale of things, realistically speaking. And this film offers that perspective to include as many people as possible. So that's a different perspective from the classic Hollywood way of looking at when hero saves the day. And as a Chinese person, I'm just really proud and very happy to see this movie can get done and made and be presented to the world in a very mainstream, enjoyable <laughs> and falling into the tradition, but also doing something different of the sci-fi movie genre thing. That sentence is too long. 
I've basically lost control of wh where it's going, but you know what I mean. That'll be the end of this video. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I hope this has helped you making up your mind about whether you should spend your hard-earned money on this movie. And I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching and also film watching and also happy Chinese New Year. It's still within the new year. I mean, technically, traditionally, it's not gonna end until the 15th, the Lantern Festival, which is still 10 days away. Yeah.